During the Second World War, Soviet soldiers had to get to the battlefield on foot or in trucks and attack the enemy on the armor of tanks. In the Wehrmacht and the Allies, things were different. They made extensive use of armored personnel carriers. They are convenient in that they allow the infantry to quickly reach the battlefield and, without dismounting, immediately get close to the enemy, hiding behind the armor. Therefore, as soon as the Second World War ended, the two largest Soviet automobile plants were tasked with providing the army with armored vehicles for the infantry as soon as possible. The Gorky automobile plant was the first to cope with the task. In 1950, armored personnel carriers BDR-40 began to enter the army. Their development of the BDR-40 was carried out from 1947 to 1949. The BDR-40 was based on the GA-63 off-road truck put into production in 1948, which, in turn, was based on the units of the GA-51 mass truck. However, it cannot be said that the BDR-40 was built on the GA-63 chassis. Its armored hull was load-bearing, directly to which the engine, gearbox, transfer case and bridges were attached. The front row of the fighting compartment is the driver's seat and the commander's seat. Behind is an unexpectedly spacious compartment, in which eight fighters are placed on reclining seats and a wide rear seat. With a length of 5 meters, the BDR-40 weighed just over 5 tons. Under the hood is a forced 6-cylinder gasoline engine, which received the designation GAS-40 and developed a power of 78 horsepower. This particular copy of the armored personnel carrier was restored by Evgeny Gain. I tried it at the very beginning of March. First impression. A very good armored vehicle with well-balanced proportions and a rational inclination of the armored hull sheets. Rear hinge doors are designed for landing and disembarking, but you don't need to go to the front row of seats, but penetrate through very original side doors, more like hatches. Apparently, by making them exactly like that the designer solved two problems at once. They increased the strength of the body and reduced the weight of the doors themselves. Again, the windows made in these very doors look strange. In them you look not to the side, but down. Yes, and forward through the glazed embrasure, you can see a little. When I was driving, I always thought to put something on the seat in order to sit higher, and it was better to see what was in front of the hood. But in this case, your head will be much higher than the upper edge of the armored hull, and any sniper will easily put a bullet into it. I can imagine what it's like to drive a car when, during a battle, an armored shield has to be lowered onto the front embrasure. And if you close the side windows with armored doors, then you won't be able to look to the right at all. Visibility in the commander's seat is also very poor. Forward visibility is limited by the same glazed embrasure as that of the driver. In case the glass is covered with snow or rain, a hand-operated brush is provided. Turn the lamb to the left to the right, the brush moves. You can look sideways through the window of the door only by leaning back and bending into three depths. However, at eye level for a side view there is a narrow embrasure with a shield that opens to the side. In the end, I found the best position. You sit with your ass on the back of the seat, and tower on your head above the car. The review is 360 degrees. True, this is until they shoot at you or until the awning is pulled up. And without an awning in the winter it's bad, it's still tolerable ahead, because the hot motor shield warms the legs, but an icy wine blows in the compartment for the fighters. In front of the commander's seat is a tank radio station. On the right hand is a handle, which, at the request of the driver, opens or closes the blinds. The speedometer is optimistically digitized up to 100, in a plate fixed next to the levers, the maximum speed is 80 km per hour. We, while moving along the asphalt road, hardly accelerated over 40. There is no power steering here. When the car is stationary, it is very difficult to turn the steering wheel. But it is worth moving off, and the effort on the steering wheel becomes like on a regular truck. A four-speed gearbox without synchronizers, so you need to switch it with a double squeeze. But the biggest challenge for the driver is visibility. It is very difficult to follow the knurled track, because you cannot see what is in front of the hood. If you need to turn around, you can't do without outside help. Back, no review. Mirrors on the wings are an independent initiative of the owner of the car, they were not standard. Sideways through the side window located at the level of the belt, only the edge of the curve is visible. However, as I soon became convinced, this is the most important thing. 
because I just pulled off the road. The wheels just went into the snow on the side of the road. That's it. The car starts to slip. Stuck almost guaranteed. I do not know how the BDR40 behaves on the ground, but on the snow, a complete fiasco. Patency, only on the beaten track. A little to the right, a little to the left, and the end of the trip. How did this armored personnel carrier manage to pass state tests at all? In winter there is simply no patency. Now I understand why they managed to accommodate eight fighters in a small armored personnel carrier, so that there was always someone to push the car stuck in the snow. It's good when there is a strong pole or tree nearby, you can use the winch located in front of the engine. When our next armored personnel carrier got stuck, we tried it out. At first I thought that the cable would not be enough to reach the tree located 50 meters away. But it was enough, and we dragged the armored personnel carrier to the road with a winch. It's a pity that there is no cable layer, the cable wound back somehow, I had to unravel it again and lay it manually, which took more time than rescuing the armored personnel carrier from snow captivity. The main trouble when driving on snow is the lack of interwheel differential locks. On the example of the BDR-40, I was convinced how important this mechanism is for any off-road vehicle. Because without them, there is simply no patency. Well, the front axle is connected rigidly. If one axle is stuck in a snow drift or ditch, the second one will be pulled out, but on the condition that all wheels have the same grip on the road. In general, the main disadvantage of the BDR-40 is its limited cross-country ability. The problem of its increase was solved only on the next model of the armored personnel carrier. This armored personnel carrier was called the BDR-60. He became four axle, received two engines, could swim and weighed twice as much. Within 10 years, 8,500 BDR-40 armored personnel carriers were manufactured. They have not been used in the Russian army for a long time, but in some other countries the BDR-40 continued to serve. The largest fleet of BDR-40s is in Vietnam and Cuba, about a hundred copies each, and in Egypt and Mongolia, there and there there are more than 200 of them. In total, after more than 50 years after the end of the production of the BDR-40, about 800 of these armored personnel carriers remain in service.